Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about security, specifically when using custom content collections and the Wix data API. To explore the concept of security, we're going to use a simple example that allows users to submit comments to the website if we know them, but any user visiting, even if they're anonymous to us, should be allowed to see all of the comments but not submit. First, let's take a look at the structure of the content collection for this example. We've created a simple collection called comments with one field for email. Note that when you're using something like email, you should set this to personally identifiable information so that the field is encrypted. That's some of the security that's provided out of the box. And the only other field we're going to need is a text field for comments. In the editor, we have a simple page set up here with a repeater with a text element connected to it. Comments repeater and comments text are the name of the elements. There is an input for adding some comments and a submit button and a small error message that we're going to hide on de uh, as a default and then show to users that attempt to submit a comment but should not be allowed to. At first glance, the way you might start setting something like this up is to connect your repeater through the connect to data toggle here and create a data set from your collection. So we're going to do that first and then we'll talk about why this isn't actually the most secure way to deal with the data that we're working on. So let's connect the to the comment and okay, that's all hooked up. So in the code, let's start building out a little function to check the current member that's logged in and allow them to submit a comment. First, let's import current member. From Wix members. Then When someone attempts to submit a comment, on that click event, we are going to kick off an asynchronous process. And you'll see why it needs to be asynchronous momentarily. We need to instantiate an empty object that will ultimately contain the comment and the user's email that we need to insert. We want to set the comment to the value of the input comment. And then finally, we want to know who this user is. So this is where we need to await the response of current member, get member. If current member returns us a value, we then want to get that member's email. and set the object to contain the email address and the comment that user is trying to leave. If our object has an email, this is kind of redundant because we really already checked that the user has a its member email connected, but just in case, the extra layer of uh, confidence there. Then we are going to await another function we are about to work on called insert comment that is going to take one parameter of our insert object. 
if there is no email, then we don't want to put anything in the database. So we are going to then take that error message and show it to the user. Next, we need to create our insert comment function. For that, we're going to need Wix data. So go back up to the top if you haven't imported it yet. Import Wix data from Wix data. Then, outside of your onReady function, we're going to start a new function called insert comment. That takes our insert object. For this, we are going to call Wix data insert to the comments collection. We are going to add that insert object with the email and the comment that we want to send. Then we're going to start a promise here that is going to return us a result. And then we are just going to return for the purpose of this example. When that result comes back, we're just returning a success message to the console. And then if there is an error, we're just going to catch that error. And also just return that to the console as well. So let's take a look at what's going on here now. We're importing the current member and checking that there is somebody logged in that we know before we're allowing them to call this insert comment function. This is potentially enough, depending on what you're inserting and what your collection looks like. In our case, we want a little more security for our collection because we are housing user emails in it. So the next thing that we really need to think about is the actual permission settings of our comments collection. When you create a custom collection, the default permissions are site content. Let's take a look at what site content and some of the other out of the box presets mean as far as the permissions available. So site content allows anyone to read the data. Right here, this is the problem that we have. Even though you aren't publishing the user emails on the front end of your website, because anyone has read permissions on that collection, someone attempting to get access to your data, if they were successful at getting through your members area, they could then get all of this data out and read that collection. So we also have the other issue here that site content creation is admin and we want site members to be able to create. So this isn't going to work for our scenario at all. If you look through here, you might think that member generated content is what we would need because it does allow the site member authors to have access that they would need to create, update, or delete data. But again, what we're seeing here is that anyone could read this data and we need to protect the email addresses in a more detailed way than we're doing right now. So none of these presets will actually work for this particular scenario. We do have this option to then set this to custom. So let's go ahead and do that now. To choose custom, click on your settings and scroll all the way down. Custom uses at the bottom and then you can set this blue button to allow you to set each um, create, read, update, and delete permission specifically. We don't want just anybody to be able to read this content. And you might be thinking, well, wait, I need site visitors to be able to see this content. That is an issue that we will deal with shortly. For now, we want to lock down completely the read abilities on this collection. We're going to allow site members to create data, site member authors to 
update their data and cite site member authors to delete data. Let's go ahead and save that. So now we know that this won't work the way we want it to anymore. There's not going to be any ability to see the comments by anybody that isn't an admin. What we need to do now is allow that data to be shown on the front end, but in a more secure way. To do that, we're going to create a function in the back end to get all of the contents. I've created a little function that I'm going to copy into here, and we can talk about what it does. You're going to first import Wix data, then you need to create a little options object and set suppress auth to true. This will override the authentication of admin that we set previously. So you might be thinking, well, what's the point of that? Because now it's just back to anybody can read it. There's a few other things that we're going to do to make sure this is secure. First, we've already put the Wix data call here in the back, and we're going to use that to populate the repeater. But then in the actual function to get data, we're querying the content, content collection. We're adding those options so that the anybody visiting the site will be able to get to the comments collection. And when the results come back, we are going to filter the results. To do this, we're using object destructuring to be able to cherry pick out the data from that content collection that should be returned no matter who calls this function. In this case, we need to return the underscore ID for the purpose of populating the repeater, and we only ever want to return the comments. This is where another layer of security comes in. No matter who triggers this function, even if it's somebody that shouldn't actually have access to this function, they will never be able to get back any information except for all the comments in the database. So now the email is secure. Back in the page code, there are a few adjustments that we're going to need to make to now use this new method. The first thing we need to do is get rid of this comments data set. Data sets are for adjusting your UI quickly, and you may know that there are options to filter within these data sets that you connect to repeaters. It's important to understand that this is not a security feature. All the data set filtering and any kind of settings you see in there are just for the purpose of the ease at which you can set up your UI. So depending on what kind of data and what kind of collection you're connecting, this might be the, the quickest and most, um, most quick way to get your data loaded into a repeater. Data sets are very fast and you can manipulate them with code. When you're considering security, this is not the best thing to use. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. All right, so now as you can see, the repeaters reset to its original um, default flow there with the dummy text. Now, let's go ahead and import that function we just created from the back end. The next thing we need to do is populate this repeater now with that data call. To do this, I'm going to change R on ready to an asynchronous process because our get data function is asynchronous. Now let's set that comments repeater data attribute to an empty array. This will instantiate it as empty so that when the site first loads, they won't see any dummy data or anything in the repeater section. It will be empty. The next thing we're going to want to do is get that data from the back end. So we're going to set results equal to await our get data function. Then when we get some data back, we are now going to set that comments repeater. Oops. We're now going to set the data attribute of that comments repeater to the results that come back. And in the comments repeater 
on item ready we are going to set each item in the repeater the comments text dot text to the value that is returned in item data dot comment. This will now instantiate and populate our repeater in a safe way that there is no way for anybody to ever get to the emails. You have a few layers of security now. You have the Wix members area, and then you have your data populator in the back end, and you're only ever returning the comments and the ID associated with the row of data. Let's take a look at how this works on the front end. Notice now I'm not logged in, but I can see these comments. Let's make sure I still can't comment while I'm logged out. Can I comment? No, I cannot comment. Okay, let me go ahead and log in. Can I comment? Let's submit that. I didn't get an error. My comment did go through to the, to the content collection and now we know that it's secure. This was a really simple example and what it was meant to do is introduce you to the idea of just thinking about the custom data and the custom code you write from the security perspective. And it's important to think about security in layers. So yeah, having a members area is one layer of security. Nobody that's logged in can trigger this function, but say somebody got past that wall somehow, or maybe made a fake account and still tried to get to your data and you think you know them, but they're actually not a site user that's there for a good reason. Whenever you're working with sensitive data, whether it's um, personally identifiable information, or maybe just some other sensitive data that's um, sensitive to your business that you wouldn't want to expose. You want to deal with that data in the back end, lock down your content collections at the highest level you can, and then very um, carefully pick and choose who, not only who can access the functions, but what data is returned no matter who is who is triggering functions on your site. <laughs>